Hey, what's up guys? My name is Charlie. Today we're going to be doing some more requested reaction videos. And this video is requested by George Ortiz. And it's going to be Johnny vs. Sonic Boom. Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. Hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Um, but uh, yeah, Johnny vs. Sonic Boom. Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. However the hell you pronounce that. I've never played this game before. I've never heard of it. Um, I've I've played Sonic games before. I've heard of Sonic, of course, but I've never heard of this one before. This is this is a new one for me. But uh, yeah, let's uh, check out the video, shall we? Let's go. <laughs> Wonder what it's gonna be like. Is it a driving Sonic game? Who knows? <laughs> I've never seen it or heard of it. The Wii U. Okay. It's finally here. For such a long time, I have been completely at a loss on what to make of Big Red Buttons and Sanzaru Games' attempt on making a Sonic game. One team consisting of former Naughty Dog employees, while the other was responsible for... ...porting the first three Sly Cooper games in HD and creating the fourth game Thieves in Time. The community, for lack of a better word, exploded <laughs> when the first teaser image went public. Silhouettes of what looked to be radically different designs for Sonic and the gang, and later on, boom. Here you go. Yeah, I did a double take okay. at first, but I slowly warmed up to these new looks. They helped highlight the qualities that the characters were known for. Knuckles was always known as the powerhouse, so mm. it would make sense for him to be bulky. The original design, at face value, you had to take Sonic Team's word that he was super strong. <laughs> so yeah, they're different, but I can still recognize them as Team Sonic, so I won't waste any more time on this subject. Okay. What I was concerned with was everything else. What were Western developers going to do with the Sonic franchise, even if it was just a spin-off series? Let's start with a new TV show, which as of this review was four episodes in, and... It's okay. The first two episodes were good, while the other two were... Eh. I'll be in touch when I remember to load up my DVR. There's no way in hell I'm tuning in at 7 in the morning just for a 30-minute cartoon. Now Nintendo Direct, I'm all over that shit. The two Sonic Boom games serve as prequels to the TV show, so we have licensed Sonic games based off of a TV show based off of a long-running video game franchise. Oh. That's a first okay. for Sonic, unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> Let's start with the Wii U title first. Okay, Wii U. Rise of Lyric begins with Sonic being massacred by enemy fire. <laughs> One Adobe Premiere title card later and we jump back to the previous day where Sonic and his band of sidekicks are going head to head with Dr. Eggman and Metal Sonic. Eventually they locate some ancient ruins and decide to take refuge within them when Eggman's goons outnumber our heroes. Oh hey Shadow. The ancient ruins hey, turn Shadow. out to be a prison for Lyric, the new bad guy for this game that plans to conquer the world with the power of the Chaos Crystals. Of course. Of course. After that, the attempt <laughs> at storytelling just disappears into nothingness. For every crystal you collect, it's the same tune each and every single time. The gang head into a new area, find the crystal, and then it's off to the next place. No transitions or anything like that. There's no world building, no significant character development. Shadow is here for about five minutes total for some reason, and that after sucks. about eight hours, the game Shadow just is awesome. ends. I would say this story is even more one note than Sonic Lost World. How do you do that? <laughs> it's a brand new world for Sonic, but they give no context or origin for anything other than Lyric being an evil prick, something that was already established on the initial meetup. How did Sonic and Tails meet in this universe? What's Shadow's beef? What's the deal with Eggman? Not a damn thing. If they're trying to find a new market with Sonic Boom, this doesn't do a good job at all explaining shit. Only longtime fans will get what's primarily going on. So far, it seems the only purpose of Sonic Boom was to give the heroes new designs. If it means anything, I can praise the acting. I feel this is some of the best voice work to ever grace a Sonic game, and the animations during cutscenes look great. It's fluid, it's it full of squash and right. for that cartoonish that effect, looks a it looks bit. natural. The model kind construction is up to snuff, I can dig this, me. but I don't like Amy's Muppet mouth. And the in-game dialogue sessions look right out of a PlayStation 2 game. No time like the present. Wait, there are presents? No. Have you ever wondered what a 3D Sonic game would play like with none of the trademark high-speed platforming? Let's not misinterpret things here. There's speed and there's platforming, but okay. the two never, ever correlate. It's like two different games here. Speed is reduced to these arbitrary on-rail sections that I like to think of as a combination of Sonic and the Secret Rings and the mock speed areas of Sonic 06. You're only required to avoid obstacles when needed and collect rings to stay alive. Just be grateful when you're done with that, Sonic you're playing 06. the most basic platforming game with Sonic <laughs> and grateful. company. This is as fast as you're going with anybody here, and there's no way to upgrade it. Now, this isn't much of a problem when you're on the hunt for the crystals as the architecture of Sonic Boom is built around these slower characters. Camera Still, if I'm look. playing what's being sold to me as a Sonic game, spin-off or otherwise, without the ability to go fast when I desire, then what's the fucking point of playing a Sonic game? Like it or not, speed was always a selling factor for Sonic, not yeah, necessarily the main focus, the... but an element that separated Sonic from the rest of the crowd. Without that, you have effectively turned Sonic into the very thing he mocked in his inception, a run-of-the-mill platforming game. If you're willing mm. to accept that, to see what Rise of Lyric offers beyond that omission, you'll find a game that, at best, is perfectly average, and at worst, an unpolished mess 
that brings back memories of games 8 years prior. For a sizable margin, you can take control of Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, and Amy at any point with the press of the D-pad. Mm. They all bring something slightly different to the table, enough to make them stick out. Sonic is somewhat faster than the others, Tails can glide for long winded jumps and makes an excellent range fighter, mm. Amy can jump up to three times that makes her my top choice for anything involving platforms, and mm. Knuckles brings that power with nothing else. He can't even Knuckles glide anymore and he's only allowed to climb specific walls for level progression. Platforming mm. is astoundingly straightforward no matter what your current predicament is. If you can jump from one place to another, you hit a switch here, swing on a rope here, and occasionally get all automated here, then congratulations. Rise of Lyric will be nothing to you in that regard. You have infinite lives and you can afford to take multiple hits because you have a life meter that refills with rings. Something that will help keep you alive as you battle through an army of robotic mooks. Yes, combat is also part of the equation, there's a healthy amount of it, and just like the platforming, it's very simple shit. It doesn't help my case that the last two games I played before this were Hyrule Warriors and Bayonetta 2, which only accentuates how utterly bare the fighting mechanics are here. Every character has a single combo that you can chain together with a singular special attack that never changes. A new yeah, mechanic in Rise of Lyric is the Ener Beam, a multi-purpose energy whip that can serve as a means to grapple on specific points for advancement, or as a weapon to draw the enemy closer to you for a good old-fashioned tossing or to just fuck around with them rodeo style. <laughs> the Ener Beam is clunky in the heat of the fight. There's no combo potential for this thing. You can only use your fist or the Ener Beam separately for fighting, but never simultaneously, and using the whip itself doesn't feel as rewarding as smacking someone with a homing attack. I can't believe what I'm about to do here, but I'm gonna compliment the Werehog. As unnecessary as it was in Sonic Unleashed, when it boiled down the fighting mechanics, it did a better job. You can unlock more combos for the thing, it had more potential, you could upgrade its attributes, the works. It's the same one-two punch here, and maybe every once in a while you can find a stray weapon to rack up the hits, but that happens so infrequently it's borderline pointless. You'd wish there'd be more power-ups, but those are nowhere to be seen, and the only massive air quotes here. Upgrades you can find are power glyphs you can earn by helping people out in the hub worlds between crystal hunts. I'm not surprised to see hub worlds in this game, and they're visually pretty, but they're so expansive and empty. And remember when I said that level design was built around Sonic's lack of speed? That doesn't apply to the hub worlds. Look, I want to go fast here. I want to be able to whip out a classic spin dash, yeah. boost, break the go sound fast, barrier, be able to crazy. get from place to place super fast, but I mm. can't. Yeah, I can mash that's... the X button with Sonic to execute an extremely short range spin attack multiple that's times for enough. some sort of fast, fast traveling. Gotta I can fast. utilize the one or two zip lines that won't even let me detach early until I reach the end of the line, or I can find the sporadically placed dash panels that doesn't even allow me to move left or right when blazing through the terrain. These hub worlds are ruthlessly lacking. Where yeah. is everybody? If you're gonna have places like these, fill them up for Christ's sake. Yeah. You'll only find a handful of people here who offer short side quests for power glyphs that are upgrades by technicality. There's nine of them total, but I didn't feel a goddamn difference when equipping any of them, and that also applies to the small amount of upgrades you can purchase from the store with your collected parts and crowns. These collectibles you can find all over levels in the hubs that lets you buy more shit. And while it feels good to discover treasure chests and the like, you know, rewarding my sense of curiosity and all that, it doesn't mean anything to me when I think the payoff is garbage. Oh man, this is not even going into the things I hate about this game. Damn. You know, I had a different set of expectations when going into the Sonic Boom franchise. You know, I set my bar pretty low because I didn't know exactly what to expect. Hmm. But Rise of Lyric managed to surprise me at times and just how crude this game felt. <laughs> I praised the voice work earlier, but in game for fuck's sake they never shut up. I don't mind the flavor chat when they're talking about their current situation, but they comment almost every time they grab rings, punch something, press a button, and even yeah, when they I touch a that. bounce pad. Yes, Sonic, I know it's like these roads were built for you. I heard you the first 48 times three minutes ago. This riptide boat section's a mess. Awkward controls and firing mechanism, and there's even a point where I sunk the ship and still managed to win the ongoing battle. Damn. Why do I even need to take this boat? It was established earlier that I can do something called hydro dashing. Why introduce yeah. that concept and then completely ignore it for something more mundane? Enemies can clip through the floor sometimes. Characters can pop in and out of a dime. Look uh, at this here. Model? No model. Yeah, that's model? just... No model. This even happened when I initiated a side quest with this dude. Sonic and company just flat out fucking vanished. It's kind of funny <laughs> because it looks like he's game. talking to himself, but come on, guys. In an area that required all four characters to use their abilities to proceed one hero at a time, I got to the point where I needed Knuckles to climb some walls, but when I switched to Knuckles, he was suddenly warped to the very start of the sequence that only Amy and Tails could get across. Mm. Now I gotta take a fall to reset myself and lose some collectibles as a result. Yeah. If you're in the middle of combat and you trigger a scene where the game sets up the next destination, you can still get hurt while you're totally helpless no that's that's so primitive there's no knuckles how are you doing that <laughs> i want to do that can i do that i wish i could levitate like that oh my god 
The figurative cherry on top is the frequent graphical hiccups and jittery frame rate. This shit chugs during the mock speed sections and stutters outright when loading other areas in the hub world. When you're frame playing local co-op, these issues along with the entire visual fidelity become worse. It has something to do with how the Wii U requires more resources when one player uses the TV while the other player uses the gamepad. Two or more players can also participate in team challenges requiring the players to if complete you can find fucking anyone to play with you. Admittedly, humorously, verbally abuses you. You can beat the shit out of robots <laughs> together, you can collect rings and beat more robots up, nothing really different than what you do in story mode, or you can push some colorful balls together. I'm sorry, I just can't go on with this. Why uh, is this getting the way it is? What happened here? Was it trouble development? How frantic was the production schedule It looks a bit lackluster. They wanted to make something it different, so but their means more. of doing so was via subtraction, design, core mechanics, appeal. Everything feels lesser here. I can't in good faith recommend Rise of Lyric to anyone. Mm. Every Sonic game to an extent has been designed for the younger crowd, and I know there are some kids who will eat this shit up. <laughs> but kids deserve better than this. There's no excuse for such a sloppy execution. As a Sonic game, it fails. As a platformer, there are so many better options out there. If you're a parent, don't treat your kids to this. Get them something that'll last, something with a fuckload of polish and love, like Mario Galaxy or 3D World. Yeah, don't sure. make this your first Sonic game. It's not a Sonic game, it's a game with Sonic characters. Sonic Lost World offered a better experience, but I recommend Sonic Colors Generations and the yeah, Classic Series way above that game. Let's just move on to Shattered Crystal on the 3DS. I think you guys get the point. Okay. Sanzaru Games took the helm for the 3DS Sonic boom because over the last few years it's become mandatory for a console Sonic game to be accompanied with a handheld equivalent. The end result, Shattered Crystal, is thankfully overall better than Rise of Lyric, but it still has problems. In an alternate continuity within the alternate continuity, Amy is kidnapped by Lyric. Who would have thought something bad would happen to you if you idiotically stopped defending yourself to chat with your friend while the evil snake was still trying to capture you? Sure. Sonic commences his adventure <laughs> to rescue point. her, and he's eventually joined by Tails, Knuckles, and newcomer Sticks the Badger, an overly paranoid wacko with a mean throwing arm who's somehow Amy's best friend. Switching between the four characters is well, still we always have feature, that crazy the feature, but of the game is closer to a traditional Sonic experience than how Rise of Lyric approached things. Your goal is to go from one stage to another utilizing everyone's signature abilities in a structure that many would classify as Metroidvania. A big right. part of this game is exploration and you're not just looking for the exit. To access other levels, you have to earn a certain amount of medals and just completing a stage isn't enough. Every level that isn't a race against another opponent or a run through the warm tunnels has a set amount of blueprints and crystals, and when you collect them all, you earn an extra medal. Your enjoyment of Shattered Crystal all hangs on whether or not you enjoy the idea of thoroughly searching levels for every individual collectible for the sake of moving on to the next stage. Backtracking is rampant, levels can go on over 20 minutes, and in the beginning of the game, things drag to nearly absurd degrees. You start off with only Sonic, and as you progress, other characters join in, but now you're required to visit older stages with the new characters, sometimes upwards to four times to get the blueprints and crystals needed to score those medals necessary to unlock the other stages. Fundamentally, I find Shattered Crystal to be superior because it understands what I look for in so game, fast talking, I can't platform. keep up. <laughs> Every character brings the speed while bringing something Bull. else to the mix without straying from the formula. My biggest issue is the overemphasis on the exploration. That's not entirely the game's fault. That is what they were going for. It's more of a personal complaint of mine. But because you need to search every nook and cranny for trinkets, I think it just serves to pat things out. I don't like when you have to spend against conventional hours design looking and for gaming, and crannies specifically and for the Sonic there. franchise. You just want you know, to skip Besides that, almost everything sometimes. else checks out. There are power-ups to help protect you, upgrades that actually mean a damn when you collect enough blueprints, a great map feature that can really help you locate uncharted territory, and the presentation isn't so bad, except for Knuckles' face. What the fuck happened here? It's like <laughs> a story nuts in his mouth for the winter. Yeah, the controls like were a little, bit little uncomfortable pies. at first, but I was able to adapt in a very short amount of time. I was expecting something really half-assed, but it's different enough to stand on its own, and I legitimately think it's the better game between the two. Is it a must-buy? No. Don't spend $40 on this. Wait for a price drop or get someone else to buy it for you. <laughs> Sonic Boom as a spin-off franchise, though, leaves a lot to be desired. I'm not terribly surprised. Again, I did set the bar low, but it sucks to see Sonic going off as Rocker again after gaining some momentum with half of Unleashed, Sonic Colors, and Sonic Generations. Why is it so hard for developers to be consistent with the quality of Sonic games? Yeah, nowadays? there's some good Future Sonic games and some really blue bad blue Sonic blue games. Like Sonic 06. <laughs> Sonic team has a store for the Hedgehog yeah, Xbox 360. next year. Mm -hmm. But like Rise of Lyric, I am in no rush to see what's up ahead. If mm. it's good, it's good. If it's bad, I won't be shocked. Mm. Anyway, that's it. Those are my full thoughts on mm. Sonic Boom. I'm going to take some time to get this shit off of me, <laughs> and then when I get back, it's time to bash some heads in, folks. November 21st is Among Us. Super Smash Bros. 4, Nintendo 3DS, and Wii U. you got to see the entire line. But it's not just going to be a review on Smash Bros. 4. I'm going to do an entire retrospective on the Smash Bros. series in general. I've been playing it since the N64 days. I feel it deserves such. So I hope you guys look forward to that. With all that said, thank you guys for watching. Have yourselves a great night and take care.
All right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the Sonic game. I, I don't think it's for me. It, it, I mean, there's other Sonic games I would play that are much more better. Um, but yeah, that's not for me. This is a Sonic game, not for me. Ooh. Ooh, don't do that. That's painful. I've done that really before. Really should have shaved the arms first. Yeah, that's painful. Hey. Ooh. I felt that. <laughs> I've done that totally before. It's very painful. Um, but uh, yeah, that was Johnny vs. Uh, Sonic Boom, Rise of Lyric and Shattered Crystal. Uh, never heard of the game, never played it, but from what I've observed from his video uh, of the game, um, yeah, it's a game I would like to skip. Um, you know, there's much more better Sonic games, and it's unfortunate the Sonic game sort of franchise is, you know, gone a bit watered down because you get some good ones, you get some stinkers like all video game franchises. Um, but, I mean, I just really want there to be a really good Sonic game lately, you know, it was, it, in 2020. I really want there to be a really good Sonic game, even though it's 2019, but at least in 2020, I'm um, hopefully they will release a brand new Sonic game in 2020 upcoming this year, and that it will be amazing, just absolutely incredible, you know, crisp 4K, high quality graphics, uh, just absolutely incredible for the PC, uh, you know, just for the Nintendo Switch, uh, just for everything every console imaginable uh obviously you know it's just gonna be for nintendo of course obviously uh but then again there are some um um sonic uh games for steam so it could happen you know there are sonic games for steam um so it is possible um but either the case it, the game i would give a skip i'm i'm it's just not selling it for me i mean it's it's just not a not it's not oomph, that's the word I'm looking for. It's it's not enough oomph. <laughs> that's the word. It's no oomph to it. It's not enough oomph for me. Um, but uh, yeah, I'd skip the game, unfortunately. I wouldn't play it. Even though it looks good at some parts, and some parts look terrible. I mean, the camera angles didn't look good in inspiring. Uh, the, the camera angles look a little bit frustrating. Like you got to keep, keep fucking moving, the, adjusting the camera. I hate that shit. Um, but uh, yeah. I'd probably give this one a skip myself and play a better Sonic game. Why not? Um, but uh, yeah, I, uh, it was a good video. I liked it. So if you like this video, make sure to give a like, comment down below, make sure to uh, subscribe to my channel if you enjoy my content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace. <laughs>